All right, this is still the ArchiCAD introduction. Now we're going to have a quick look at how to use the line tool. The line tool is probably the simplest of all the ArchiCAD elements. And just for now, we're going to stick to the two-dimensional elements rather than the three-dimensional elements. Again, just describing how this works. We find our line tool in our toolbox. Once we've chosen the tool, it opens up all the options in our info box. If I now click on the settings dialog box, then I can edit a lot of these attributes. So when we've got a line, that could be a straight line or it could be any other shape of line that's built into ArchiCAD, even something as complex as a hedge or a zigzag line or a squiggle or, or anything. Essentially these are line types, dash lines. We can draw a line and then we can edit the line or we can use the right one, right color, right line type from the very beginning depending on how we want to work. Alright, let's make it simple, let's start with the standard type. Now when we're drawing, ArchiCAD is a vector based program, it's a CAD program which means that we choose a start point and an end point. This little X on our screen represents our drawing origin which means in terms of X, Y and Z coordinates this is the middle of our universe. Now we don't need to draw from this point, but it helps if we set out drawings relatively close to it rather than a long, long way away. So I'm just going to click anywhere on the page because it's much easier to draw relative to a point than based on the polar coordinates. Okay, now we have this little pet palette which comes up and hovers around and follows us wherever we go. And if we want to see where this is, maybe turn it on or off. We usually don't want to turn it off, but sometimes it does that automatically. If we go up here, this is called our tracker. And if we click this, it will show or hide, toggle, our tracker. Now I'd recommend that you always keep that tracker on, but if it disappears, now hopefully you know where to find it. Now when I'm drawing in ArchiCAD, I have a guideline. You can see this orange line that's sort of following me around, and this is helping me to draw at standard types of angles. Now this might be useful or it might just be a bit frustrating. If we want to turn this off, this little grade box here is our guidelines and I'm going to click that to turn it off. Now you'll see that I can move around my page and there's no guidelines being shown. The guidelines are good to have on normally but just for the purpose of this exercise I'm going to turn them off. The next thing that we need to see is when we're drawing we're looking at two particular numerical values. We're looking at distance and we're looking at angle. Distance being how long our line is and angle being essentially the angle or orientation of the direction that we're drawing. So when we're talking about angle, zero starts at right or horizontal to our point. As I move up the page to vertical, we get to 90 degrees. Move to my left, 180. Move down lower again, if this was proper coordinates, it would be going down to 270 and then all the way back around to 360 degrees. But you see that it's not. It's now basically going up to 180 and then it's going minus from minus 1 all the way through to minus 180. And because we're using our line to draw first, it's going to figure out where we want to put it. So let's say we want to draw a line straight or horizontal or orthogonal in its direction. Now we could hope to get it onto zero by moving our mouse really carefully but it just won't happen. The better way to draw is to hold shift. Now as long as I'm in approximately the right orientation if I hold down shift on my keyboard it's going to snap that line straight. Now no matter what I'm going to do it's going to keep that angle at zero. Similarly if I move further up the page to close to 90 degrees and hold snap, hold shift that is, it will snap to that 90 degree angle. Now it won't snap to any others because I've turned my snap grid lines off. If I turn my snap grid lines on, it's going to snap to the closest one of those. So this is why they're useful to have on, but sometimes they're just a bit confusing. 
Now, so therefore, if I want to draw a straight line, I'm going to draw a square in this case. I'm going to draw a square that's one meter by one meter by one meter. That doesn't make sense, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to hold down shift, drawing to my right, and I'm going to draw in a counterclockwise orientation. Once I'm holding down shift, now I don't want to guess a meter, I'm going to use real values. So holding shift, I'm going to press D, which brings up my distance, and I'm going to type in 1000, press enter, and that's going to draw a straight line exactly one meter long. Now we can draw a bit, let's say randomly, or hopeful that we're going to get it in the right place. That's not a very good way of working. When we're drawing with CAD, we really want to be precise. Now precise can seem like it takes a while, but the more time we spend on it, the faster it will become, I promise. Now, in order to ensure that we draw exactly on the end of this line, I'm not going to just hope that I get it right and click, because if I just hope, the further I zoom in, the more we'll see that I was completely wrong. Now, that doesn't even matter how far we zoom in. I could zoom in really, 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 really far and still hope that I get it right and not get it right. So, no matter how far away we are, I'm going to use snap points in order to make sure I get exactly on the end of this line. Now, when I hover over the edge, you'll see that my cursor changes from a cross to a tick. And that means that I've found an end point. Once I've got the tick, I know I can click on my point and it will be exactly where I wanted it to be, no matter how far I zoom in. Now, if I want to draw a line directly up, what do I do? I move in the orientation that I want to draw, I hold shift, press R, type in a thousand, sorry, I said R that time, that's an old habit. Let's do that again. Move till it is a tick, move to the left, hold shift, R is radius, and it used to be called radius, it's now distance. But the other thing is, I can press either R or D, it recognizes both. Type in the distance, press enter. Now, of course, I didn't need to do that. I typed in a thousand, but I didn't need to. There is another way. If I go to my line tool, start that line again by finding the arrow, move in the general direction, hold shift. Now, you see that I've restrained to a horizontal axis. If I now move my cursor down, you'll see that my cursor has changed to a pencil or a pen and it's currently white, it doesn't have a fill. If I hover over a line and over the edge, over the corner of my line, we see that that pen or pencil turns black, which means it's found that intersection. It's not gonna to connect to the, that intersection, but it's going to restrain to that intersection. And I can now click and know that my line, if I was to measure that, would be exactly a meter long. Now to finish that off, I don't again need to type in a value. I can move my cursor down to where it starts and again, this time I don't even need to hold shift. It's not a bad idea, but I can see that my angle is 90 and my distance is exactly one meter. Click and I've now got, if I use my arrow, four lines creating a box. They're all exactly one meter and they're all exactly in the right angle just because I used the measured way rather than trying to guess how it would work.